separate gallery that houses these beautiful miniatures. Um, she's also responsible. These rooms would have been huge. Just a little bit about Narcissa P. Black Thorn. Yeah. Looks like a Yep, yep. Yeah, we uh, the realistic details. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's just And I'm assuming... Awesome. Hello and good day, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday edition, Meet the Miniaturist Museum edition. Very, very special um, uh, day, uh, special uh, Meet the Miniaturist uh, topic. Um, thank you all for joining. We're just gonna wait a few minutes while um, we let some folks catch up and get in. Please use the chat box to say hello. I love to hear from you guys. Um, the chat box will be open the whole time, so feel free to use it. Please let me know where you're joining from. Um, let me know if this is your first Meet the Miniaturist. Hey, Seattle, good to see you, Vicki. First up, um, is this your first Meet the Miniaturist? Um, and how did you? Oh, nice. Welcome, Vicki. First time. Um, I mean, I know the topic is crazy fun, and I know why you're here, <laughs> but um, and I'm, you know, I'm here for it, too. But hey, everybody. Hi, Allegra. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so just give me a shout out and where you're joining from and thank you guys for joining. I'm going to wait just another minute to let some more folks join before we introduce um, our wonderful hosts for this Meet the Miniaturist. Hey, Anita, great to see you. Mary Ellen, Marilyn, Rhode Island, Newport, yay. Hi, Jane, Connecticut, Betty in Kansas, Portland's on the line. We, this is going to be awesome. Hi, Cindy. I know where you are, Connecticut. Hi, Sharon, saying hello to everybody. Hi, Susan, good to see you. Hi, Helen. All right, we have a lot to get to, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start, but welcome. If you're just joining, say hello in the chat box, uh, use the chat box, but I'm gonna do a little bit of housekeeping because it's been a while since I've actually done one of these, holidays, et cetera. But, um, so if you don't know who I am and you're new to my channel, um, I'm Darren Scala and I am a miniaturist. Um, I am a collector, I am a hobbyist, I am a maker, um, but mostly I promote miniatures because I love them so much, but also because I sell them. And so it kind of works hand in hand. I love it. I love what I sell. And so I do that through estate sales. I do do that through um, um, sales online, auctions, etc. I actually have a auction coming up of a collection from a collector um, who has passed, but it's a, it's a mixed collection of artists and non-artists, manufactured stuff. Look for um, look for that uh, heads up on that sale. It's happening in January. I'm putting that together right now. Donald's on the line. Please say hello to Donald. He's my wonderful helper in the background. He's going to put the link in um, so that you can uh, go and sign up on my eBay channel, sign up for my social media so that you can get all of the updates on what's going on. Um, if you are interested in selling a collection, I'm going to put that in the, in, the, in the chat box too. You can call me, you can write me, and I'd love to chat if you have a collection to sell and work with you. Um, I'm actually planning for a webinar in a couple of weeks. So look for that. If you're interested in selling your collection, I host a webinar on how to sell a collection if uh you know what what it what it looks like and what your options are if you want to sell a collection and whether it's through me or through other channels i take you through all of those options so i'll put that in the in the in the in the chat box as well uh so just uh, when that's coming up sign up so that you hear about it um, if you want to support my channel i'm going to put that here in also um you could become a d thomas miniatures patron and get access to exclusive content. I have something coming up in January. I can't talk about it right now. But um, finally, I'm, uh, there's two more things actually. If you miss any of my Meet the Miniaturists or you wanna go back and see some of the previous episodes, um, I will post my YouTube channel link here too. You can see the previous um, events and you could watch them as many times as you want. Or if you miss one live, you can go back and watch it. Um, someone had made a really great suggestion about uh, what you know, how else can how can we improve these Meet the Miniaturists? And someone asked to sort of give a heads up on some upcoming events that are happening in the mini world. So I'm happy to do that. There's a couple of things that are happening. The London Dolls House Festival is happening now. Um, I mean, it's a little too late to get on it, but it is happening now. I wanted to announce it. It's happening this weekend. So if you're in London, head over there now, um, or maybe it's over at this point. And then there is another mini club 
sponsored show in Delaware happened eight, happening April 3rd um, uh, at the at the Crown Plaza, Wilmington, Delaware. So look for that. Just like um, I think that's like a good you tell me what you think. This is a good way to, to talk about what else is happening in the mini world. Um, so, again, follow me on my social media channels. Uh, if you want updates on what's happening, not only in my world and what I'm sponsoring, but other things as well. Um, and I will check, I will go back and check the chat box. So if, if I don't respond now, I do read all of the comments. So if you have questions, put them in there. I'll get back to you later. Or you know my information. You could always reach out to me. I'm very accessible, whether you DM me or email me, et cetera. So without further ado, I am going to bring up um, our host for this Meet the Miniaturist from the um, Knoxville um, Museum of Art, which is awesome. The Knoxville Museum of Art, which houses a collection of nine thorn rooms, silent scream. <laughs> and we are really, really, really thrilled to have Jolie Gaston here, who is going to be taking us through the rooms. Now, she is a miniaturist. She is a maker. She is a collector. Unreal. Some of the beautiful. <laughs> so she knows her stuff. So I'm like thrilled that we're going to be getting this sort of private virtual tour um, right from someone who really knows a lot about the Thorn Rooms, about miniatures. Um, she's also responsible for decorating these rooms each year. So I'm just like crazy, crazy excited that she is with us and she is going to be taking us through this amazing, amazing assortment of Thorn Rooms. So with that, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. And tell us, Jolie, tell us a little bit about yourself other than what I just said. <laughs> and, and talk a little bit about what we're going to see today. <laughs> well, um, welcome to the KMA. We're really lucky to have this museum here. It's a great art museum, and we're even luckier to have the nine thorn rooms. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about me that you didn't say. Um, I've been pretty active with the International Guild of Miniature Artisans. Yep. Um, and about 10 years ago, Anel Ferguson and myself started uh, doing these thorn rooms or decorating some of the thorn rooms for the holidays. And they bring in some extra cases for us so we can do a few other special things that I'll show you. Yeah. Um, but we can go ahead and go in our gallery. It's a purpose-built gallery um, with mm. lighting control and everything. And uh, I think you'll be able to see everything pretty well once we get in there. So, Beautiful, I'm crazy like excited. Great, thank you. That was a perfect intro. <laughs> I love that there is a separate gallery that houses these beautiful rooms. Ugh. Okay, we're just going to give you a quick sort of pan around the, the gallery room. Um, the rooms are inset into the wall. And then these cases that you see in front are some of the special cases that they bring in for us um, to set up basically pretty much anything we want to. We try to, you know, make sure that we uh, represent a lot of guild artisans and fellows and do a few fun little things, but uh, we can start over. Let's see, we'll start over in the corner here. <clears throat> Jolie, can you just set up and talk just a little bit about Narcissa Knee Black Thorn? Oh, yeah, um, she was a... Uh, the married into the Montgomery Ward family. Um, and so if you're somebody my age or older, you probably remember the Montgomery Ward's uh, stores. So it was a pretty big thing. She had a lot of money. Um, I think that she really loved miniatures as a, a child and her uncle would bring miniatures back from his travels for her. Um, and then just kind of got into it and decided that it would be a really good way to raise money. So she did, I think it was initially 30 rooms um, and put them in the, it was not a World's Fair, um, it was the Century of Progress Exposition in 1933 in Chicago. And apparently those 30 rooms were just like the head of the exposition, um, lines around the block, they raised a ton of money um, and that encouraged her to do a whole other set. Um, so the rooms that you'll see today were part of the first set that she did that were in that exposition. Um, these were also in with the second set of 30 um, in two different world's fairs, the San Francisco World's Fair of, I think it was 1939 and Chicago World's Fair of 1940. Wow. Um, and, you know, as she was doing these things, uh, there, you know, was depression going on. And so she had access to a lot of artisans who were out of work. Um, mm -hmm. And so she started getting things that were just beautifully made and purposefully made, you know, to be on display. And eventually when she had close to hundred rooms, 
yeah. in 1941, she donated the whole lot to the Chicago Art Institute. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, and pretty quickly thereafter, the Chicago Art Institute sold the first two sets of room boxes, the original sets, to IBM. Uh -huh. IBM toured those for about 20 years. And at that point in time, they just were, you know, kind of falling apart. And they went back to Mrs. Thorne in 1962 and she refurbished them. And 20 were sold, not sold, I should say right. given to the Phoenix Museum of Art. And we have nine of them and we don't really know why. <laughs> but we're glad that you have them. All right, so what are we looking at now? This is the first of nine, right? Yeah, this is the American Summer Kitchen dated 1885. Um, and I'm not sure why Mrs. Thorne picked the particular dates that she did and not, you know, 1886, for example. Um, but in this room, this is one of the rooms that uh, is kind of a challenge to decorate for the holidays yeah. since it is a summer kitchen. Uh, but some of them were used all year round. And so we kind of thought, well, you know, if you're in a summer kitchen and at Christmas time, you're probably stringing popcorn or making paper chains for your Christmas tree. So this year I put in a Jane Davies figure. Um, we got some popcorn by Jan Patry and a little doll by Mary Grady O'Brien, um, just to make it look like, you know, there's some life in the setting. So every year you change up the rooms with your Christmas decorations and you commission new pieces? Um, I try to, I haven't changed a whole lot. Sometimes I try to vary them a little bit and I'm trying to, as I go along, um, get each room decorated. So far I've only gotten three. Um, uh -huh. so I, I'm on the lookout for artists to do a few other things for a few other rooms and I've got a few ideas. Yeah, got it. Wow, okay. Of Could course. you talk a little bit, I'm struck by, you know, one of the amazing things that she, ability she had was to play with light and depth yeah. and dimension. And we're looking at that window right now. Can you talk a little bit about the skills behind that and how she built those in into all of her pieces? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good realistic detail to add because otherwise you just have a square box. But this way you have a situation that looks like it really is a room because you're looking outside and you have outdoor lighting. Um, when we go back around to the back side, I'll show you what what that actually looks like from behind. Um, right. It's not a, not a beautiful, nice garden out there. It's a big metal wall, yeah. uh, but you know, master of illusion. She just did some beautiful things, but the fact that she got light coming in through a window really gives it some life. Right. And some great depth. And, and I know we're going to get to see behind the scenes, which is crazy exciting. And I can't wait for that, but that, <laughs> and then we're going to be able to see just really how big these boxes are to account for all of that space. And yeah. To create those windows and the space behind the windows and all that. So I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Let's move on and, um, and do, we'll quickly look at a few of them. Um, the next one is the federal dining room circa 1810. Um, right. This one is a really beautiful room and very nicely done. The American kitchen um, is part of her earlier collection. I think this was one of the ones that she, you know, had purposefully made. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're going to assume that it's all hand painted behind that. It's a hand painted um, uh, mural, yeah. I guess you'd call it mural. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah I totally can see it. it. Everybody at home can see all these. Can see. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. A, I would definitely assume that everything is hand painted, hand yeah. stitched, hand built. Yeah. Um, all handmade. Yeah. Uh. And that cabinet in the center between the two windows is extraordinary. Isn't it beautiful? It just is. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're this also- This room, I'm, I'm hoping for uh, next year, maybe to have some greenery on the table for the holidays, because basically yeah. that's what they would have had. Yeah. But again, you get a nice little side view out there, out to the gardens. Right. Looks like you could just move right in. Yeah, there is a little bit, a little um, much reflection. So I don't know what mm. that, if, if there's something we can do to adjust the lighting, but inside the gallery. Mm. Not inside the gallery itself, I can. Uh... It's just at certain angles, that's all. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I'm assuming there's depth behind the fireplace as well. Like the, it, 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 you know, there's more behind it, right? Into the. It's not flat. 
Yeah, no, I could see stuff in there. Yeah, yeah there's, it, there's a firebox in there. Yeah, beautiful, just beautiful. That's so, great. and the other thing is, um, did she have artisans make some of the pieces in these rooms that yeah, we know of? Are they have... signed pieces? Besides the cup jacks, um, you know, I know that there were a lot of other people involved, probably some jewelers, um, people who were very skilled artisans and yeah. were out of work during yeah. the depression. Yeah. Now, this room is pretty special mm -hmm. because, again, it's one of the rooms that we've done for the holidays. And the interesting thing is the, the brochure regarding the New England bedroom um, says, you'll notice that the bed is dressed in its summer linens. Uh, and okay. so, yes, yeah, so I thought, well, how, how am I going to do holidays in that? Um, but I figured, you know, if you were back in 1770, that uh, you would have been working on Christmas presents all year long. So you're going to be sitting in your room, doing some knitting and knitting some gloves and socks yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we put in the, the chair in the foreground um, and all of the knitting is by Sue Crisco. She donated and wow. just did this incredible, incredible knitting. Fingers in the gloves, patterns. It's just incredible. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And wait, was the chair, is the chair from the Thorn Room or is the chair from the hop from? Chris no, that, um, that's part of um, Anel Ferguson's collection. Oh. It's made oh. by Nellie Belt. Um, and she brought it in so that we would have a place to set the knitting. It's beautiful. It works perfectly in the in the room. Uh, you don't know. If, I would think it was part of the room originally. No, it's sure. it just goes so perfectly. It really. And, does. Uh, the, the cat who's trying to unknit things under there is a sous vide cat. Ah, I love the collaboration with some of the really really wonderful artists that you work with. It's great. Yeah, that's just been such a, a great thing to know people who do such incredible work. For sure. Lovely, okay. just lovely. Okay, we can move on to the English dining room. Um, this is late 18th century. And this one, again, is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have done a holiday uh, thing in here. It was a few years ago. Jeannie Rooley um, had a, a couple, the Fezziwigs from, if you'll remember, from A Christmas Carol. And uh, we borrowed them and they were dancing here in the foreground of the English dining room, because basically the dates worked out. Uh -huh. If you kind of, you know, go back and figure out how old Scrooge was when he worked for the Fezziwigs, uh -huh. um, it would have been the right time. And I imagine since he was an importer, he would have had, you know, a dining room like this. So, right. but they were, they were really beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I, I can totally appreciate the amount of detail that goes into planning and making sure that things are period, that they fit really nice, just nice work. Yeah. That's, that's one requirement that Anel and I have is that, you know, anything that goes into the thorn rooms has to be period. Right. Right. We can do whatever we want in the other cases, but we we're pretty strict about what goes in. Yeah, for sure. And that just honors um, the, you know, Narcissa Blackthorne, it honors the museum, it honors the art. It, it's really the right, the right way to go for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, beautiful. Okay, we've got an early American kitchen. This one's kind of dark, but you know, it would have been in colonial America. <laughs> right, that's right. But again, she's got, you know, an outdoors here and a little fire going. This is one of the few rooms that contains a figure. Um, we've uh -huh. got two rooms, and I don't know if there are actually any more. Um, there may be in Phoenix, but we have two rooms that contain a figure. Uh, Mrs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thorne just wasn't big on doing figures in rooms, um, and I'm, I'm guessing she didn't have access to our great artists that we have today. So, Right, and we can debate figure or no figure for days. Oh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what, what, I'm struck by what is that figure made of? It, it looks very one-dimensional. Um, no, she's definitely three-dimensional, and I'm thinking she's maybe carved from wood. I haven't actually taken a good close-up look at her, but that's a good question, and so, I will definitely research it. I'm just curious. Um, yeah, and she's very small, which would be right for the scale and the room and the period, and tiny. Wow. 
Okay, here's a popular one. We're going to move on to the Victorian parlor, um, circa 1850. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is a really popular room. Um, that <sighs> chandelier is just gorgeous. Yeah, it really is. It's prime for being able to set up Christmas because they would have had a feather tree. Um, and this year I included a Daniela Kefauber boy. Uh, um, he's, you know, unwrapping his presents and he's got his top and um, pretty happy under the tree there. Yeah. So that's not a, a, a that chandelier doesn't have bulbs in it, right? Is it a no, candle uh, chandelier? Candle? Is that, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, it. You know, it might have been, it could have been a gas light chandelier uh -huh. I mean, in terms of what it would have been originally, or certainly it could have been candles. Um, I don't think that was ever electrified. There's no uh -huh. electricity running to it. It sure would be pretty lit up though, wouldn't it? Someone, someone's, uh, Dorothy is saying, is it a candelabra? It's a question, right? Um, candelabra, I, I think is, is um, something that sits on the ground or sits on a mantle. Right, right. So I don't know what the other technical name for this would be other than chandelier, but there's probably a better name for it. <laughs> so wait, talk about that tree. It, it, it's, what did you call it? Oh, this is a feather tree. This one was made by Cheryl Kerfoot. Um, and they did, you know, bring in real trees, but for some reason they decided to do some feather trees, which actually used real goose feathers that were dyed and, you know, kind of fastened on or put into little holes in these little tree structures. Um, and they were usually, you know, for tables to sit on tables. I love it. I love it. Um, I do, I do want to take a question. Actually, Tammy just um, posted one, which is perfect timing. Cause I was going to ask guys, if, if I was going to ask you guys, if you had a question, um, the question is, is there a rhyme or reason for the selection of the time periods that she chose? Um, yeah, you know, I, I yeah. don't know. Um, I think, Probably to begin with, it was whatever kind of furniture she had, you know, the stuff that she uh -huh. had in her collection. But I think as she went along, she, you know, probably was focusing in on certain decorative periods. Right. Um, and I don't know why this, you know, particular parlor is dated 1850 as opposed to 1851. Right. But <laughs> she probably had a reason. Yeah. Right. All right. We're zooming in on that. Is it a painting? Is it a, is it a photograph? Curious. That one is probably a painting. Painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do uh, have a print over on the side wall that looks a lot like a watercolor, but it is a print. Yeah. We how, might have a little too much reflection. That how much it. documentation came with these rooms when they, the, when they came to the museum? Was there a ton of documentation? Um, not like a lot of written documentation, but when we first got these rooms, um, it was in the 1960s and Mrs. Thorne actually came and installed them at a different location when we were the Doolin Gallery of Art. And then they moved over with us when we became the Knoxville Museum of Art. Ah, all right. And by the way, that was Delena Feliciano from the museum. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. We're going to be seeing more of her later when we switch around and get to see the back of the gallery. <laughs> all right. Good. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. We only have a couple more rooms left. Spanish bedroom, um, 16th century. And again, you know, you can tell because some of these pieces are fairly thick in scale. Um, that it was probably something or things that she had in her early collection, you know, so that you can see that the it's not as fine, although it's very rich. It's a very rich, you know, room in terms of silks and velvets. Um, the detailing is a little bit chunkier. Right. But still really incredible that she had all these beautiful pieces. Right. Right. And, and, and you had mentioned before what, well, before we started the live stream that she had an uncle who brought back things for her when she was a child. Yeah. Um, I think he was an admiral. I don't really remember what his naval status was, but uh, he traveled around the world and brought back little things for her. And of course, when she, you know, I think she was wealthy to begin with, but when she married into more wealth, uh, mm -hmm. did a little bit more traveling and collecting like we all do. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wherever we go, we look for the uh, miniatures. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Not to get a reflection. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, I'm struck by the, um, I don't know if it's wallpaper, but it's got a beautiful reflection to it, like a, a metallic, no. I don't know. Um, brocade, I believe. A brocade, it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Oof, mm-hmm. so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, could we could we uh, assume that some of these pieces were vintage to her when she got them as a child? Like that bed looks like it might have been from the 1800s, made in the 1800s. Yeah, definitely. I think definitely she, you know, collected things that were vintage to her. Right. And also repurposed things. I think in one of the thorn rooms, maybe in Chicago, um, she used a, like a hair comb uh-huh. as a, a uh, headboard for a bed. Yeah. Cindy Coons is, is, um, is, 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 is focusing on there's a dog bed there. I can't see it. Is it to the right? Good eye, Cindy. Is that, is that a, a dog's bed? That's the kneeling prayer bench. Oh, oh yeah. Prayer bench. Yeah. There's a prayer bench back oh, there. It's a prayer bed. It, but, oh, okay. It's a prayer bench. It's a beautiful piece, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh my God. With the gold fringe. Yep. Yeah. Is that a, is that a crucifix? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. This is a, Spanish bedroom from the 16th century. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. I wonder if that was a piece of jewelry at one time. No worries. It looks like it. It does look like it. Mm -hmm. It does. But she did have an eye for putting the pieces together. It's a beautiful, it's it's beautiful. Absolutely. And we've only got a couple more rooms left. We have um, again. A room. Let me try this angle. Find some different angles to see if we can cut some of the lighting. <clears throat> um, the Mallorcan kitchen is another one of her rooms with a figure in it. Uh huh. I love the flooring. Is it a flagstone floor? <sighs> it is meant to look that way. I don't know what it really is. I would guess that it's probably a clay. Uh, it looks but like it could be. I mean, it could be that she did use something, you know, real. I love the way the light comes in the window on this one. For sure, it 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 looks like a Dutch master painting. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can get my head to block some of the light back here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh, that is just beautiful. And then there's mm-hmm. like an inset into the wall. What is in there? A, a statue? Mm-hmm. What's that? Madonna yeah. child. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Even the, the, what is it? A pot of vegetables? Yeah. Looks like still life. It really does. Just in that yeah. light. It almost has a Vermeer quality right in that little area right there. Absolutely. And it, it just, it so deliberate. It's so deliberate with the light and everything. Mm-hmm. And then there's light coming back from the fireplace. Is it backlit? Yep. yep. So, oh, yeah, beautiful. Oh, and then there's all the painted pottery. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and all the wall stucco. Sharon had that question. I had the same question. Are they stucco or are they? Yeah, that's it. You know, it's either it's simulated stucco. I'm not really sure. Again, probably plastered, but it's intended to look like a stucco. Yeah. Oh, and I love the covered wine bottles with the basket. With Yeah. Of that. Yeah, so there's a lot of talk around that prayer bench slash dog bed, but <laughs> it's confirmed that it is a prayer bench, guys. <laughs> well, the crucifix above it, right? That that just seals it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Plus, I don't think they had dog beds in 16th century Spain. Did they not? I, I they feel may like... have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right. That's a that's a question I have. All right. So wait, what's? Oh, I'm seeing a reflection of your Christmas pieces in there. Because I was going to ask yeah, what that is. Sorry. Well, no, 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 no. Worry. Room, and then we'll we'll get to our Christmas tree. Yes. Our last room is the 17th century Spanish foyer. And this is really my favorite room. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know, can we see you in front of that piece? Because I don't think people, I, I, I would like to just to share the sense of scale that these boxes are not just tiny boxes. They're big. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. They're huge. But yeah. these rooms would have been huge. This, yeah. this and they're, they're huge from behind. There's a whole superstructure behind these. And I can't wait to get to that. Oh, all right. Yeah. Let's talk about this room. Look at the beautiful chandeliers. Yeah. Uh, this is just a fabulous room. I got in trouble in the sixth grade on a field trip because I 
everybody was getting ready to leave and they were on the bus and I went back to the thorn rooms to see this. Oh my so, goodness. Oh my goodness. That yeah, is this, this one is just beautiful. The outdoors. Uh, yeah, it's just really neat. And again, you know, I think she repurposed things. I think that there were some things that may have been like chess figures. Yeah. Um, you know, that she's changed into different little things. Yeah, and I think people need to know that, you know, it, it, making miniatures and creating miniatures, it's all about illusion. It's mm -hmm. all about creating illusion. Doesn't, it, it, as long as it looks great, the fact that it's a toothpaste cap, although I would fight you on that, <laughs> um, but you got to make it work. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, she might have used one if they'd been available. I, maybe. <laughs> well, that is just a stunning room and the floor is divine. Oh my yeah. God. Just beautiful. So let's take a question. Um, the, okay. the question, there is a question about scale. I believe everything is in 112 scale, right? Yes. Um, there was another question. Oh, El Elliot had a question about the frames, about the room itself, I guess. Is the, the room was built for these boxes, right? Including the frames that frame each box? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this, everything in this gallery was built for each room. Um, so uh -huh. it was purpose built to display each room. So we've got different sizes of frames because this is obviously a larger room. Um, and then like the English dining room was a smaller room. Um, right. But these were all built specifically for each room. And I'm just curious. So they were the frames were built and they have little tags and each tag tells you what the room is, right? Yeah. Beautiful. Just Spanish foyer. I got it. And there's lock and key for each. Hmm, yeah. That's a key to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. When they oh no, <laughs> them in here, um, they, they are the they are structured into the wall, so you can only open them from the back now. Oh, all right. So we can't break in in the middle of the night, guys. <laughs> only if you go into the back room. All right. <laughs> this is great. So it's that was the ninth room. That was all of them, right? Yep, that's all nine of our oh. rooms. Um, and we'll see the uh, bedroom and the Victorian parlor from behind when we go in the back. Okay. I so let's see. Point out the tapestries are oh. our needle point. Like. They are. So they're hand stitched. Mm -hmm. Of course they are. Yeah. They're beautiful. And that lovely. So actually, do, do you have, um, uh, Delana, do you have every item in each room categorized? Uh, and, the curators do somewhere, yes. So everything is cataloged? Yes. Every item. Oh, that would be cool. Is that online? That's not online, I bet. Um, I don't think every item is online. You can view our collection online on noxart.org. There's a section on the collection where you can read more about each piece. Uh -huh. And there are some tidbits about like, like what certain pieces are or where they came from. Right, right. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay. All right. So are we, is, are we moving to the next place now? Yeah, we can take a quick view of, uh, of what Anel and I have installed for the holidays. Oh, yes, and then we'll of go course. Yes, please. Let's do that. Um, oh, look at have, that. We usually get a few cases in here and we try to do different things. Um, I think I've put in mid-mod Merry Christmas a couple of times. Um, but it's kind of fun. It has toys and things from eh, my age group, a little older, a little younger. Love it. I love that TV. Who did the TV? You know, I cannot remember. I, I do have it somewhere. I'll, I'll email you it. later with it. I'm just curious. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I love the tin. That is very mid-century, that tin Christmas tree. Yeah. Oh, my grandmother had one of those. That turned <laughs> spun around and changed colors. <laughs> Well, I would love to be able to achieve that effect here. Well, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. And even is the is that a tree cookie jar or a tree? What is um, that on the TV? That is, see, Darren, you're showing your age that you're so much younger than I am because everybody's grandmother my age had one of these ceramic trees that had yes. Christmas lights that would light up in them. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's a And that one actually room. will light up if I connect it to electricity. Donald is saying some of us still have them. <laughs> Barbara says she has two. All right, that's awesome. All right. Yeah, they're, I think they're coming back now. 
I, 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 oh, and the viewfinder. Oh, all is right. that cool? It was Viewmaster and the little reel sitting on the box. Oh man, I am in heaven. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about 3D. Are any of those pieces 3D printed? And what's your feeling on 3D print? Um, I'm really excited about 3D printing. A lot of people are doing some really cool stuff. And there are a few 3D printed things in here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm, the Viewmaster might be. I'm not really sure how they did that, but. Um, but you're I think, open you know, to it. You're open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I mean, it takes some skill to be able to figure out how to get something, you know, designed so that it will print out and be effective. And then there's a lot of hand painting in many cases, too. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. No, and, I, I think 3D is pretty cool, and and I think we're going to see some really neat stuff. But but you'll yeah. never get me away from handmade wooden furniture and things like that. I love them for sure. Agree with you. Okay, beautiful. Okay. And um, this is a vignette that uh, Peter Kendall did the, uh -huh. the vignette uh, background, and there are yeah. a few different pieces in here. Um, uh, I have to look at my that. notes. The, that is a I think a Dennis Gen V. Oh my goodness. And the That's beautiful, cool. beautiful French knot rug is Pat Hartman. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Isn't that great? Oh, lovely. Great job, you yeah. guys. Just beautiful. Thank you. Yes, really nice. And then we've got a few little fun things over here. We've got uh, Harry Potter's First Christmas at Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. And this part of the vignette shows the, the feast with all of the little trimmings and things. Nice, very nice. And then we have a little setup of uh, his first Christmas in the, the Hogwarts great room. God, I love that chair. Whose chair is that? I don't know. I got that at an That's auction beautiful. and uh, it's a little beat up and I absolutely love it that way. Yes, I love a beat up chair. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you can't, you just can't buy that kind of uh, no, wear and tear. <laughs> really can't. Ah, oh, very nice. Thanks. And this year is a special treat. We have Mrs. Claus by Jeannie Ruley. Oh, God. She's, her work is amazing. Mm hmm. Hello. <laughs> the dog has come to visit me. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Just taking yeah. it all in. Is that also well, a period? Is, is that a period room? I, it's, this like, one, no, I just put that one together um, as as Mrs. Claus might have, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, but it There's looks an elf on the like the style of the cans. I don't know what's on that. Uh, yeah. No, it's beautiful. The, co the colors are all great. It has a vintage coloring palette to me. Yeah, it does. And I think the, the floor cloth kind of like really creates that. Yeah. 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 But yeah, Jeannie really did uh, Mrs. Claus for us. Uh, and uh, she's got her martini back there. So, you know, she takes it easy every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. And are we spotting, Beth, Beth wants to know, are we spotting a Jane Graber decorated pottery in the back? Is yes. The, the hutch is filled with Jane Graber's holly uh, pattern pottery. Good eye, Beth. <laughs> so, so Wendy is thinking that uh, the doll looks like Dolly Parton. Yes, um, that actually was was an intention. Um, I asked Jeannie to do like somebody that reminded you of Dolly. I didn't want her to look exactly like Dolly. Oh, really? But, you know, oh, so that I was think the Santa intent. would be with somebody like that. Oh, wow. All right. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and above that, we've got another um, room oh, that the that. vignette background is by Peter Kendall. Yep. Beautiful. The nice pieces are, are part of a Nell's collection. <laughs> that chair. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that fabulous? Crazy fabulous. Love that chair. It's very, mm -hmm. it's just, I, it's. Oh. That's, that's all cruel work and needlework. And I'm blanking on who gonna, made it. I was going to say, it looks all hand stitched, but from far away, it, it looks like a pattern. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Beautiful. And then are all statues on the shelves? Someone said Jean Stroop. Lisa said, is it Jean Stroop? Stroop? Yes. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it is. Good eye. Good eye out there. I think that's Peggy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just beautiful. Oh my God, I spent days looking at this room. 
it's gorgeous. I, I love the color and that chair is just, it's magnificent. It's even more magnificent yeah. in person. And then one more question before we, we break for the, before we move to the next room. Um, oh, there's so many great questions. Um, <laughs> Would love to know who did the who did the cruel work? Who did the cruel work? Did we say we did say who that was? Yeah, Jean, that, right? that's Jean Stroop. Jean Stroop. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, and this is the this, we didn't see this, did we? That's another tufted chair. Yeah, I think that one is Gail Steffi. Ah, okay. Beautiful. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. And that's another one of those tiny trees, those period trees. Yep. Another period. little feather tree. Feather tree. I've got to remember yep. that. Yep. Beautiful. That one I think is by Jana Schoenberger. Oh, okay. And, and last, last but not least, we have, um, we just usually put a tree in the center oh. uh, just to, you know, have a tree. But this Ooh, is the 10th year for doing the holiday in the Thorn Rooms. And I tried to, you know, put little diamondy accents on it and things like that. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a perfect tree. Lovely. Ah, oh, very nice. And a great way to sort of finish off this room. Yeah. Lovely. So you want to you want to follow me around back to yes let's do it all right you're gonna now get to see a very very rare glimpse and we're also giving um Delena a, a, a rest with her arm right how are you holding out okay, <laughs> Delena. Good. all right good thank you for hanging in oh we also didn't talk about that beautiful little menorah oh my god all right we, we could do this for days but we have to move on <laughs> yep. um yeah, so this is a very rare glimpse, guys, of behind the gallery walls, the all the inner workings of the Thorn Rooms. Um, it's not a pretty sight, which I think is the most interesting part of all this. You're going to see, um, you know, a, the rough side of the wood. You're going to see the the you're going to see the uh, the wires hanging. You're going to see how they light it from behind and and how they get to the boxes to fix things and update things and all of that. Again, like I said, this is a rare view. And uh, thank you so much and for 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 taking us behind behind the scenes like this because this is amazing. So there we are. Here we are behind the scenes. I, I could see the lighting real quick. I can see. The, yeah, no, we can see. The lighting. Oh, yeah. So the lighting is kind of this. Um, I think we replaced them with LEDs. They were originally fiber optics. And there's just this, I guess, like this conglomeration, a circus of wires and lighting. So each thing goes to its own individual box so that it's backed up. And you can see down these hallways, these are the backs of the rooms. And we're going to pull some out for you. So I'm going to hand this off. So we could see each of the, me the metal portions, which we had a question, are the metal pieces original to the boxes? Yes. Okay. We're, they, I can see they're all marked which, with what room they are, which is nice. My question yeah. is the light. Do you, are all of the ceilings sort of left with space to light? Yes, the ceilings are all open. What's that? She said, yes, the ceilings are all open. They're all open, okay. Yeah. Or yeah. a portion of the ceilings are open because sometimes you have a chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the background um, area is not the actual room itself. Oh, oh, it's the background. So those lighting, oh my goodness. This is the big reveal, you guys. <gasps> the outside room. <sighs> yeah. So which room are we getting to see? I. That's the outside room. So that basically is the structure that allows you to kind of see through the doorway and into a whole other area. Oh my goodness. Look Let's at see that. if I can get in there. Look at that. So when you go and, and update these rooms for the holidays, this is what you do. This is your process. You go behind the scenes, you turn, you turn the room yep. around and you get to work in there. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. We, uh, they carefully turn this around because that's scary. I know it's, I, I can see the chandelier like wobbling and I'm like nervous, but I, I'll tell you what I am so struck by is seeing the glue marks on the edges. There must've been some other backing on there at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and so. I, I mean, obviously there's a lot that it's been through. Yeah, I love that. But who would have thought that there'd be like this much structure behind each room? Yeah. I know. 
which, you know, again, it's a testament to uh, Mrs. Thorne when she put mm -hmm. these pieces together. Yeah. Wow. So are they on a, basically a lazy Susan? If what, what would you call this? It's a, it's a box on a, on a spinning wheel. Oh, I, I, I it comes out as a drawer. I see. It comes out as a drawer. And then the top is kind of a lazy Susan, but it doesn't swing all the way around. This is about as far as it goes. Right. Okay. Beautiful. And then we have like this little space that we can squeeze in and get to things. What do you want to um, so, uh, talk about or? Well, I'm going to just take some questions because there are a lot. Um, do you know why some parts of the box are made of wood and others are metal? That's a good question. Why were, what, what is that metal piece? Is it, that's the curve? What um, was that? I think that it, the, the boxes themselves were wood because I don't think she put a lot of lighting in the boxes, but uh -huh. the metal structure around the outside were basically to contain the outside areas, like the things that you see through the window. And I think that, you know, she put, she had bulbs back there. And back then they would have been a little hot. Yes. So Was it also a box. <laughs> maybe to reflect the light also? Maybe. 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 I don't, well, I think they're painted on the inside. Oh, they're painted on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions about like, or something that they want to see a close up of? What's that on the table? Uh, on the, the, the center table, there's a, tree under a glass what is that yeah that's um one of the victorian shell decorations they <sighs> use shells to make um like little floral decorations under glass domes or sometimes they put them in frames i love that is that from the thorn room or from the christmas yeah update? you know that's that's a thorn room piece oh the my. only things that anel and i added are the um table in the foreground and the the toys wow oh i love the little nutcracker all right let me go back it, it, I have to read, I have to read the questions. So it means I have to take my eyes off of the thorn room. <laughs> Show the drapes. <laughs> All right. So somebody had a question about showing the drapes. The drapes are gorgeous. Maybe we can go closer in. Oh, yeah. now we're seeing, yeah. A lot of detail. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Um, you can see out the window and see the street. Oh, they are loving the feather tree. If we can get a close up of the feather tree. Also, weight all would be too heavy. Do, 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 do. Great questions, you guys. The feather tree is beautiful. Gonna have to have. Who made that? That's Cheryl Kerfoot. God, it's beautiful. You know what's really good is we're gonna we're seeing the furniture really up close, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And you could see they're really they are vintage pieces. Yeah, like, yeah. You can you can tell because they're just definitely not as delicate as in some of the rooms. And they're off scale, but she put them together with other things that make them appropriate. Am I wrong on that? What do you guys think? Yeah. I love the Biedermeyer desk. Is that right? Is that what it's called? The paintings are marvelous. I'm just taking some uh, comments. And the screen is lovely too. Does that look like it's a hand-painted screen? It is. It's a hand-painted screen from what I've been told. Just beautiful. Um, I did want to point out, like, this newspaper is a replica of a real newspaper. Uh-huh. New York Let's Times. Say. Oh, it's New York Times. We got that yeah. on. You got that on. That's perfect. <laughs> and that, I mean, you know, that was back in the 30s. So they didn't just put it on their copier and go, yeah, I'm going to reduce this and make a newspaper. Yeah. Right. Wow. And I love the cute little ottoman. Yeah, yeah, the, the little bullion friends. Yeah, the portrait. Elizabeth thinks that the portrait looks like Queen Victoria. It's possible. It is. Um, and the floors are they painted or canvas? The flooring is. Yeah. It's um, actually a carpet. It is. It a looks carpet. like it's a, a woven, an actual woven piece of carpeting. Woven carpet. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you can kind of see the the edging along here not really supposed to touch anything without gloves on. So I'll point at it. <laughs> um, we did a, a question, a, a request to see a little bit more of the, the, the imagery outside the window. If we can like okay, go back try. to the window. Yeah, we'll try. We can't really get too far in there, but. We can get it to what is behind there? What, what do we, should we be looking for? A London oh. street oh, scene. Oh, yeah, wow. A London, a London street scene with a, a park, um, there's people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it, that would be. Oh, we could totally see that now. <gasps> yeah. 
that's and that's not... mounted on that metal box. Right. So... Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, what a treat just to see it <laughs> this close. Even if you were in the room, the gallery, you would not be able to pick up all this detail. No. Um, oh, look at the tassels on the, the, um, the, the drapes. I'm, a, I'm just stunned. This is just so stunning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Fran wants to know, the scenes outside partially painted or three-dimensional? It's a good question. I, I mean, it's mostly painted. Yeah, oh, there's, I can see painted. that a tree back in, um, on the right-hand side is a three-dimensional tree, but it's against a, a painted backdrop. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. Just beautiful. Yeah, if we were in the gallery, someone's saying you would need opera glasses to get that close. So this is really is quite a treat. Um, all right, so I think this has been incredible. They loving the lace. Um, let's see if there are any other final questions before we let these guys go and, and thank them for this amazing treat. Um, oh gosh, we love having, yeah, we love having people come to our incredible. rooms. Oh, this, yeah, they're loving the, the they're loving the lace. I, I love all these comments and I will share these comments with, um, with you, Delena and, and Jolie, but thank you guys so much. If we can come back and get the, and get the camera on you guys, just so I can thank you for this beautiful treat. Um, and I want to remind everybody at home that you can watch this replay on my YouTube channel. Um, I've got an up, upcoming webinar happening about how to sell your collection, but you guys, thank you so much for this incredible treat. I can't wait to go back and watch it again. Happy holidays to you and to everyone at home. And thank you for joining us. And you guys in Knoxville, have a great rest of your day. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye. <laughs>